Welcome to this presentation on overcoming barriers to health outcomes in humanitarian crises. What role can cash and voucher assistance play? The response option analysis tool. In this presentation, we are going to be looking at what some of the response options for addressing the barriers to health and where CVA has potential to influence these outcomes. We will begin by first reviewing the Tanahashi Barriers Framework that was previously discussed in other videos. We will then introduce the Response Option Analysis tool. As we move into the tool, we will outline the different interventions that can be used to address the barriers to health outcomes, including cash and voucher assistance. Finally, we will conclude the presentation with different CVA modalities that can be designed to contribute to health outcomes. The guidance note that this presentation is based on brings together the relevant health and CVA concepts and frameworks. As you see from the outline, the note links the Tanahasi Barriers Framework with supply and demand side interventions, including entry points for cash and voucher programming. The note also provides examples of the appropriate use of CVA alongside health interventions and shares tools and indicators that can be used for monitoring these programs. This presentation will focus more on the response option analysis tool and will therefore not cover the different tools or indicators for monitoring. First, let's review the Tanahasi Barriers Framework. This diagram shows the different barriers to health covers that both health, health actors use and CVA actors can use as an entry point. Understanding these different barriers to health is a critical step in analyzing how best to respond to these health needs. At the bottom of the diagram, the long bar in red represents the people of concern who are seeking health care, while the long bar at the top of equal length represents the goal, ensuring the right to health for all. The next bar up from the bottom is, avail is availability of coverage. This is the first question that health actors ask. Are there any hospitals? Are they well equipped? Are there any health workers? Are medical supplies available and are they of good quality? The second is accessibility coverage. Do people have access to these health services? How far away are they? And this is where a key financial barrier may be found. Acceptability coverage comes next. Do people feel respected and well-treated? Are they willing to use the service? Are there any language barriers? The next barrier is contact coverage. Who actually comes into contact with these health services? And finally, the last barrier is effective coverage. Of those who do come into contact with health services, do they receive quality health services or do they receive the proper treatment? Each of these elements may be addressed by different types of programming. It helps to think about whether programming should be on the supply or the demand side, or maybe a hybrid of the two. On the supply side, the focus may be on ensuring there are physical health services with staff, equipment, and medicine through funding, training, quality assurances, and better logistics. On the demand side, from the patient's perspective, support may be, may be best come as a combination of helping individuals to deal with financial barriers or providing support to manage whatever health challenge they may As mentioned in other presentations, it is important to understand what the type of health-related expenditures there are. Even when health services are provided free at the point of delivery, household surveys indicate that people always have some levels of health expenditures. Direct costs are those that are linked to accessing health services, such as paying for primary care or secondary care. For instance, paying to see a doctor or a specialist or paying for medication. Whereas indirect costs are more related to costs incurred for attempting to see a provider such as paying for transportation. There are also other aspects of expenditure that we need to understand, such as are people getting services from a private provider rather than seeking services from a public provider? And if so, why is this the case? 
The response option analysis tool provides different ways to address barriers to health using the same barriers framework. The interventions could be ensuring services and medicines are available while increasing utilization of services by removing financial barriers. In the upcoming slides, you will see where interventions to reduce financial barriers can be used and how CVA can impact these barriers. But it is also important to note the options for CVA should be considered as complementary to some of the health-related interventions and not aim to replace them. Interventions related to availability of services are mostly related to ensuring that health services are available. So the initial response is to provide direct support to existing health facilities to strengthen them so that they continue to provide services. If health services are not available, then we must restore them, particularly in an emergency context. You will see on the demand side, where services may be available, the people of concern may not be aware of them. So in this case, informational campaigns could be useful so people are aware of what services are available and where to receive them. More related to cash and vouchers, Service providers can be incentivized to meet increasing demand that results from CBA for health programs. Addressing the different accessibility barriers include interventions such as improving security and protection so that the people of concern can access the different health services without security risks. This also includes addressing issues of potential discrimination that may prevent them from accessing these services. As accessibility also refers to physical access, in cases where people are unable to travel due to permit issues, an actor could facilitate the provision of a travel permit to go and receive the health service. In this case, CVA can support transportation or money loss for not being able to work due to the travel or due to the illness. In the case of an administrative issue, such as having the right paperwork, Particularly in the context of refugees or ITPs, health actors can facilitate ensuring the right paperwork is received. Addressing affordability is the entry point for cash and voucher programming to support health objectives. However, the optimal response to addressing financial barriers remains finding ways to reduce user fees. You will see on the supply side, this can be done by contracting health providers to provide services or purchasing of services. On the demand side, value vouchers can be used to receive direct health services. We will see this example at the end of the presentation. Indirect costs such as paying for transportation or opportunity costs can also be addressed through multi-purpose cash. Social cultural interventions can include training of health workers on culturally appropriate behaviors, for instance or ensuring that the health workers are well-versed in the language of the population. This will also improve access and utilization of health services. Because there may be barriers related to perception of specific health services, awareness campaigns and setting up health committees within the population can address any misconceptions or fears that may be around the quality of health services and the use of these health services. Health promotion campaigns related to illnesses and benefits of seeking health care services can improve attitudes and practices, which can then improve utilization. Also, informational campaigns related to, for instance, maternal health can increase the use of the available maternal care services. These interventions should, however, be done once we ensure that these services are actually available and easily accessible and financial barriers are removed. Evidence demonstrated that conditional cash can also have positive impact on utilization by encouraging people to use a specific service which they may have otherwise not used without the cash incentive. Finally, on the effectiveness and quality of care, these interventions mostly require addressing the supply side barriers by improving the quality and safety of services. For example, ensuring a timely referral mechanism on the demand side, health promotion and people-centered care can improve understanding of the illnesses and treatments available. More specifically related to CVA, using pre-selected qualified providers during the implementation of vouchers for health, 
Contracts can require adherence to treatment or protocols and quality standards, or they risk the termination of the contract. We will now look at different CVA modalities that can contribute to health outcomes. You will see from the diagram how vouchers work. The management agency that can be an ING or UN agency directly contracts a health service provider, such as a hospital, pharmacy, or another health outlet based on their own criteria. Beneficiaries then receive the vouchers to access these pre-selected health providers. The voucher can be seen as a health insurance card, if you will. Patients do not pay for anything, but present the card to the health provider and then receive the service. The agency then receives the bill from the health service provider who then covers the costs. The pros of using this modality is that the agency can ensure quality of services and can change a service provider if they do not adhere to this. Another benefit is that beneficiaries do not have to pay out of pocket to use the services and then get reimbursed, so the financial barriers are significantly removed. Finally, another positive outcome is that the entire system is strengthened by the use of these vouchers. With regards to the cons, unfortunately, setting up this type of program takes time, mainly due to the process of selecting the service provider and negotiating on the list of services that beneficiaries can receive, as well as ensuring the quality of these services. It may be difficult to really judge the quality of the provider, especially for pharmacies, and this may take time in a context of a humanitarian setting. With regards to conditional cash for health outcomes, cash is paid directly to the beneficiary once a certain action is taken and is often linked to services that are provided for free but not utilized by the beneficiaries. This type of modality or program contributes to health outcomes related to, for instance, prenatal or postnatal care. When the condition is linked to participation of a health promotion activity, it can contribute to changing the behavior of the population and improving the utilization of a specific health service. It can therefore incentivize positive behavioral change. With regards to conditional cash, conditional cash can increase adherence to a health program and can address specific health services. Conditional cash can also improve certain trends on health seeking behavior. At the same time, however, it is difficult to monitor the adherence of the conditionality and can be time consuming. In some cases, people cannot meet the condition for reasons out of their control, which means they will not be able to receive cash to address their health needs. But this is why it is recommended to set up soft conditionalities. With unconditional, unrestricted cash, the agency contracts a financial service provider where beneficiaries can then receive the cash, and the beneficiaries are free to use the cash however they see fit. Unconditional, unrestricted cash can address financial barriers to accessing health services, including paying for health services of their choice or covering costs related to medicine or transportation. But because the cash is unconditional and is not restricted to specific health service providers, there is no guarantee it will be used for health or used for a health service provider that is of good quality. Beneficiaries will use the cash to cover their priority needs, such as food or shelter. And when those needs are not addressed, they will more likely use the unconditional cash to address those needs and thus foregoing health treatment. As previously noted, unconditional cash can reduce financial barriers such as costs for transport or having a caretaker and thus address indirect costs related to health. However, because people are free to use whatever health provider they wish, there is no way to ensure quality of services. But it is important to note that evidence indicates that most people do in fact seek services recommended by the implementing agency, particularly when there are health promotion campaigns. And with health promotional campaigns, beneficiaries, beneficiaries will use the cash for a specific health purpose. Therefore, to summarize, we saw that CVA can have an impact on both direct and indirect costs. CVA can and has the potential to improve access to health services by removing some of the financial barriers to accessing and receiving health services. This can be done directly through vouchers to access health services or indirectly by providing multi-purpose cash for transportation, for instance. We saw those examples in previous slides with the use of vouchers. CBA for Health can also directly address barriers related to financial accessibility and utilization. 
CBA can improve and contribute to people accessing health services and actually using them when in some cases they may not be able to afford them. Indirectly, CBA has demonstrated to have effects on availability, social cultural barriers, and quality of care for effective coverage. CBA can also improve health seeking behavior resulting in better health outcomes. And finally, when CBA is given as multi-purpose cash, it can contribute to better health outcomes because multi-purpose cash contributes to meeting other basic needs that are detriments of health. You can find out more on CALP's website and also on WHO's Health Cluster Cash Testing website. Thank you very much for listening.